Hey guys, it's Troy, and here's a pen I bought kind of on a whim several months back. I've heard about the brand Rotring, and I've never owned one. Uh, I've heard others talk about theirs and, uh, and various models that have been out there. So I ran across this one, and it was actually fairly inexpensive. And I think it was in the 30s, somewhere around there, 30-something US dollars. I'll look it up. Um, and when I saw this, I said, let's go ahead and give it a shot. This is uh, very different, very different from anything I've got in my collection. So the Rotring Fountain Pen XL Core Lyceum, that's the, uh, the model that I've got here on the sticker for this particular pen. Rotring, a German company, right? And Rotring.com is indeed their website, but when you go to their website, one of the things you're going to find is there's no fountain pen on their website anymore. So they have all often and for a long time been known for you know, technical uh, drawing uh, writing instruments. I'm assuming uh, people who are architects and people who do drafting and technical specifications and, and uh, drawings, maybe artistry, would use a Rotring. Um, they did manufacture fountain pens, obviously. I've seen some online previously, but I've never owned one. And so when I go to their website and look around, I'm like, I guess they don't make fountain pens anymore for sale. So opening it up, this is uh, the box that it came in, just like this. And you've got that, a little booklet, and a cartridge. So here you've got uh, instructions on this particular pen. Stabilizer clip. Uh, let's see, ergonomics tells you how to uh, put in a converter or a cartridge rather. And uh, you're not going to find a whole lot here. It's going to be helpful on that side, so I'm going to set that aside. And it does come with a little standard international uh, cartridge. And uh, at least half of that ink is already gone out of that. So I decided not to try a cartridge in it. I went ahead and put a converter in it. But you pull it out. It's actually a very different looking pen. I mean, look at this. Totally different than anything else that was in my collection, which is what intrigued me about it. So, core. Turn this way. <laughs> so it tells you right there um, the direction that you're going to turn the barrel in order to uh, separate the section from the barrel. All right, so force resource up. So it, the, in, the filling instructions are right there. Force resource, which I'm assuming is what they would say is the cartridge. Germany, uh, right there. Let's see. Right on system. So. Uh, this is a rubberized cap. It's got like a hard rubber on the cap and uh, a very serviceable um, industrial style clip to it. And that's what the, the finial looks like. And it's got like a real decent grip on it. Company logo right there, molded right into that rubber. And I'm assuming this is a, a grip for not only. Uh, design in appearance but also to make it easy to grip. It is a slip top. You can see you've got that little red seal here that actually works very well at the base of that cap. It's a big honking cap, I tell you what. And you pull it off and you've got a very different style section. Look at that. It's, you know, it's, it's cut down so you almost have to have that triangular grip on it. Some people I can see where they would really not like that because it does flare out quite heavily there. So your fingers are never going to go down further than that. You get that stop right there. The nib is actually very different. Um, you know, it's it's almost a traditional style nib, but the shape of it is very different. And your feed on the bottom, a little different looking as well. So you want to put in a cartridge or a converter, you do what it says, 
you turn this way but then you get some resistance right there and then but you just keep on going and it makes noise but you'll be able to get it apart I chose to uh, find a converter that would fit this it does take a standard international converter that I was able to find here in my collection and put that in so uh, I'm assuming this is part of the the barrel system uh, or the, the latch system I'm not really sure how uh, how that works if it's more for design or if it's for gripping to help keep this in place and you can get some resistance there when you go to turn it back on but just keep going and then nice and easy on that resistance there so it's a kind of an oversized chunky looking pen and it actually fits pretty good inside my big old mitt so it's a little different I, I usually use the standard triangular grip so this does not bother me because my middle finger is going to be right underneath and my index finger and my thumb are going to be right there on the top holding in that that triangular grip so that kind of intrigued me just the very design of it is very very different and I thought it looked kind of neat it looked like something that would have been kind of a novelty item to me in my opinion and I figured alright let's go ahead and get it for my collection so I did and uh, what I found with an ink that might look fairly good considering the coloring on the top um, is this Carolina in my mind by Papier Plume uh, been to their shop down in New Orleans and uh, they make a lot of inks and this particular ink was made for the Triangle Pen Show in Raleigh, North Carolina and I picked up a bottle of it while I was there at the Triangle Pen Show last year. So, bottled in New Orleans. Well, let's see, uh, let's see how you can write with this thing. Um, very interesting. Maybe I'll give you some dimensions uh, and some characteristics of this particular pen. You can still find these online. I picked this up new old stock and it was not used, but it was new old stock, and uh, you know, it would, I figured for the, the amount of money I was paying for it, it was worth the novelty, uh, if it is indeed just a novelty, or we'll see if it's actually a, a worth owning kind of pen. Coralicium. Well, let's see how the baby writes. Can you post it? You can, and it snaps deep. And surprisingly, it's not all that hefty in the back. The cap doesn't doesn't weigh anywhere near as bad as how it looks, um, but it is kind of bulky, and uh, so it's just a little bit awkward I think on that it doesn't like I said it doesn't back weight it too much but it is just still a little awkward so I'm going to pull that off and actually it's big enough here uh, where you can write with it very nicely and you, and you see where that's got that nice little uh, uh, that little cap looking thing here well that's how it snaps deeply into that cap but let's give it a try so a roach ring Core Lyceum. This right here is supposed to be more of a medium nib. And believe it or not, I mean it it is kind of a smooth writer. Now let's give a glides right across the page. All right, so let's go ahead uh, and uh, let's see. Oh yeah, Papier Plume. And this is the Carolina in my mind. 
I thought James Taylor's song was Carolina on my mind, but anyway. This is actually kind of a neat pen to write with. It's very different. I like the oversized of it. I like the fact it's uh, it's bigger. I like oversized pens. I like the, uh, how it's kind of a precision thing. It looks very different. And I like how it snaps tight. This thing has not run out of ink since, uh, since I first had it. It has not evaporated because it's got a good strong seal on it. And um, it's not overly heavy altogether. Uh, and it, but it's just a little awkward, I think, with the shape of that. But it is pretty cool looking. So something very different, very, um, very weird, and maybe just a little bit of a uh, little bit of novelty to have. But it, it writes fairly well, and I've been using it. So the Core Rotring Elysium, um, and it's still I've seen them out there on eBay. So if it's something that uh, kind of appeals to you, just maybe you can find one of these to add to your collection. Thank you.